I realize that this is very short notice and I mean, you may not be able to come on live now, but perhaps you'll be able to watch the broadcast later. But I wanted to come online and share with you um, what I believe God is speaking to me and, and so that you can um, pray about, be ready for. These sounding, these so far broadcasts are are when I feel the Lord is giving us a word of preparation. And uh, so that's what uh, that they're for. Amen. So we're looking to see. Hello, Carla. God bless you. Glad you could join uh, this afternoon. And um, so I wanted to share with you about um, the intervention of the Lord uh, with you. And we're so glad that you could join us today. Uh, please sign in. Let us know where you are from. Uh, hopefully you can watch this on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel as well today. And uh, if you haven't gone on our YouTube channel, I would just ask you to go on, please. And if you like it, please hit the like button and, and please subscribe. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers so that when we punch in flame of fire, it will come up right away. So uh, I think we're around 51, I think. I think we need about 49 more people to subscribe to our YouTube channel just for that function. Ruby, God bless you, sister. Glad that you could join today. Amen. Praise God. Um, before I get into the word, I, I, yesterday we were practicing, um, I, I'm getting some new sound system things so that on Sunday I have a, a new computer that we've been operating from with a camera, better camera, uh, but we needed to fix the sound because we did a gathering on Sunday and the sound quality was not great. Uh, but, but yesterday we got some equipment to fix it and I think the sound quality would be much better for this Sunday. So if you're gonna join us Sunday at 10 a.m., uh, I think the quality be, will be a, le a lot better uh, for us. But while we were practicing it yesterday, you know, and just testing it out, and, you know, I just started to just worship the Lord and just making, playing keyboards. And the Lord's presence just came so powerfully. Right about maybe after five minutes, I could hardly even minister. And this was not, this was just a spontaneous test, trying to test the sound system. But, and I, you know, and and my son and my wife, I mean, there was an overwhelming presence and a few people actually came on and I even put at please, you know, when I come on, this is just a test, you know, so I didn't want people to think we're going to, you know, coming on for a, a, a regular broadcast. Um, but they stayed and God's presence just came. And I, you know, and I didn't know why the Lord did that yesterday in that manner. I, I mean, he just came and I've had experiences like that where, you know, the Lord just spontaneously comes. But today I do. And I believe that what the Lord was showing me yesterday was the intervention of the Lord. And he came. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. I, we, yesterday, last, yesterday, last night, in the middle of doing, um, just fixing the sound system, which is not a time where you think, you know, you're going to be ready, prepared for an intervention. But we had an intervention of the Lord. It was so deep and so personal. I was just weeping in God's presence. Hello. Hello, Carla again. Hello, Adam. God bless you, brother. Glad you could join join us today. Glad um, you can. And I believe that was a prophetic sign of the intervening of the Lord. These last few days have been very difficult. There's been a great resistance that's been released against the apostolic and prophetic ministries right now. You know, and a real, um, you know, a real uh, push to try to silence the prophetic voice of the Lord. But and it, but yet the Lord just came with His manifested presence. You know, unexpectedly and suddenly, I had one of those suddenly moments. And I believe that was really key because I've been talking about it, that the Lord's going to come suddenly and responding to him in those suddenly is going to be critical for us to deal with the things that are coming upon the nation and the world in 2021. You know, so, um, so anyways, I think that was like a prophetic sign of the word that God was downloading and depositing within me today about intervention. And that's what I'm going to share with you about end time intervention. About two and a half weeks ago or so, I just put on, on my Facebook page, intervention, intervention, intervention. That's all I wrote, intervention, intervention. And I had a sense that the Lord was intervening in our nation concerning all that, all that the enemy has plans for this nation. Okay. Um, and that the Lord was intervening and he's intervening within a people. And this has nothing to do with just Politics, it's not, this has not, this has nothing to do with, this has to do with God's intervention for us as believers and our ability to function no matter what happens, no matter what comes, that there's an intervention of the Lord and the people that have prepared themselves, right, positioned themselves and who are being propelled 
into the glory realm of the Lord as a new wine skin, you know, being able to drink the new wine. So I'm very excited today to share with you on this special broadcast about that, what that intervention is going to look like, you know, and from the scriptures, okay, and from, from, from the spirit of God. So it's word and spirit. So Lord, we just appreciate you so much today. We acknowledge you today. I just want to thank you for your intervening in our lives and our families. Lord, in our church, to our churches and ministries, and your intervention in our nation. It is true, let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. Lord, we, your people, love you. We adore you. We worship you. And Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, as you came yesterday spontaneously, and just came and soaked us and saturated with your presence and did a spiritual download. You came and you not only inhabited our praises, but you inhabited us, Lord. We are the habitation of the Lord. I pray that you would release that same habit, that same habitating of your manifested presence, your glory would come and fill each home, each person that's watching this broadcast today, Lord. That we would be, we would be, we would be filled with your habitation, and we would become your holy habitation. That will be the expression of your glory upon the earth. So, Lord, we just surrender today to you, the totality of our being, our body, soul, and spirit, all that we are, all that we have, all that we will, all that we will ever be. We give to you today, Lord, and we surrender to you, and we thank you, Lord, because of what you've done for us, and you've forgiven us, and you've washed us in your blood. And you died on that cross and you rose again that we've been disconnected from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and you reconnected us fully to the tree of life that's in the midst of the garden i pray today lord that as 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 you make us overcomers we can eat of that hidden manner to know the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom so lord i thank you and now to you who can do exceedingly above all that we could ask or think to you be the glory in jesus name amen praise god Amanda, God bless you. Thank you for watching today. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining. And again, this is a very spontaneous broadcast. Okay? And if, if you find it to have any value, I would ask you maybe perhaps to share it with others. And if you can do a watch party now, on watch party on Facebook right now, maybe you could do a watch party and encourage others to come in and listen to it. Because I think this is a critical word for us okay, of what that intervention is. I, I told you about two and a half weeks ago, the word said intervention, intervention, intervention. Amen. And I think from what I experienced yesterday, you know, about that sovereign intervention of the Lord, that suddenly moment of the Lord. God bless you, Amanda. Thank you for joining. You know, that today there is an intervention of the Lord that God is releasing to us supernaturally to those that are looking for the Lord, those whose eyes are upon the Lord, those that are expecting the Lord. I believe there's an intervention that God is now bringing us to. And what is that intervention? What does it mean? How does it prepare us for what's to come is what we're going to share in this broadcast today. You know, um, so today I feel there's a sovereign move of the Lord's intervention in his remnant people, his maturing sons and daughters. At this moment in time, on January 8th, 2021, there is an urgent need for the intervention of God in his church, within his people and in the affairs of our nation and the nations. At this present time, beloved, the Lord is seeking out those he can use. Right now, he's seeking out those that he can use for his intervening purposes. And I hope that will be you. And I hope that will be me. <laughs> I hope that will be us. You know, as the time in which man is in control of the nations is coming to an end. And that's what's happening. The end of man's control over the nations is coming to end. It's going to look like man's going to have full control over the nations, but even as the enemy comes to try to establish that with the one world order and all those things, it's coming to an end because of the Lord. In the past, beloved, with few expectations, with few exceptions, the Lord moved through human beings always, but was limited in the church age. And I've been talking about this for a while. He was limited to the level of faith and yieldedness to those he need, the, the, that those he used. And that's why I've been sharing a lot about the end of the church age, which is ending. And we're now entered into the kingdom age. And that's what the, that's what the, 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 uh, um, marriage, uh, the, um, the wedding at Cana is all about. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana. And what happens? The, the wine runs out. That's the end of the age. No more wine. You know, 
that, that, that which was limited by what man could produce had come to an end. And if you notice about what happened in, in, in that miracle at Cana, there was a divine intervention, a divine intervention in the natural things of the earth. And there was a divine, divine intervention. And when, the, when, when Mary found out the wine was gone, what did she do? She went to Jesus and said, Jesus, the wine's run out. And Jesus says to a woman, what is that? What is that to me? My time hasn't come yet. You know, and you know, that's kind of a strange state, statement. Woman, my time hasn't come yet. To what? To, to, to reveal my glory. And she ignores him. And she goes over to the sermon. She says, do everything that he tells you to do. And what is, we know what happens. Okay. It would have been a tremendous embarrassment, right? A tremendous embarrassment. If that wine had run out, it would have been a disaster for the bride, the bridegroom and the father of the bride. And so in this case, there was a natural miracle that was needed. Listen to what I'm saying. A natural miracle to come, a supernatural miracle to come into the natural situation and change it. That's about what's, that's what the Lord is about to do in his, in, in, in his full grown sons and daughters. He's going to bring a supernatural work within them to bring, a, to change the natural, to bring a change to the natural things on this earth. Okay. In our nation right now. And then this, this is, I'm, I'm not speaking politically. I'm just speaking spiritually of what's going to come from the Lord. That's going to change the direction and the function. Okay. Uh, of, of, uh, of, of, of the order of things that God wants to bring into order, into alignment with his purposes. Like I said, in the past, with few ex exceptions, the Lord moved through human beings, but was limited by their level of faith and yieldedness to those in need. However, due to the lateness of this hour, and that's where we're in. The urgency of the time that we're living in, beloved. The Lord is beginning to transcend. And that's this is this is what I want to share with you. And I want you to understand the Lord is beginning to transcend these limitations. In the church age, he functioned through those limitations. But because he has to complete us and change us into water into wine, he's going to go beyond our limitations. He's going to reach right down and he's going to command those six clay pots to be filled up with water. See, that's an intervention. That's a natural intervention. And then he's going to give a command, draw some of the, draw some out and bring it to the master of the feast. And he does. And we know that on the, on the journey, we don't know how, it's never explained to us how it changed. We just know that the nature of that water became wine. And why did it have to become wine? Because the wedding feast had to be completed. And that's where we are prophetically. The will of God happened for the church for 2000 years of the church has come to the end. And now the kingdom age is here. That, that God has to prepare a people, position a people, intervene within the people that are going to be made ready to build with the glory of God so that the, that the kingdoms of this earth will become the kingdoms of our God in Christ. It's a completely different activity, a completely deeper activity, a completely deeper intervention of the Lord, that the Lord is going to work within his interveners. And that's the word I want you to hear. I want you to think about today is interveners, his intervening ones. And that's what all of this is about. All this pressure, all this circumstances, all that you've gone through, everything that's happening in this nation. God has been testing us, preparing us, equipping us to see how we're going to respond to the natural things, to see how he's going to trust us with the spiritual things. And if we're passing that test of being able to take care of the things in the natural, he will trust, trust us with the spiritual things as overcomers, as full-grown sons of God. They're going to be able to release the glory of God to bring transformational change into the natural things and the natural order of this world to come in alignment with the will and purposes of God. Praise God. So the Lord is beginning to transcend these limitations and is going and he's going to work through completed vessels made up of the new wine skin material that can contain the new wine of the kingdom age. Beloved, we have come to the end of the sixth day of mankind. When the church age is closed and the third day Millennial kingdom is now manifesting on the earth. We are living, and I've been teaching about this, in the time of the parousia, or the appearing of Jesus within his people. He's come. First Thessalonians 1.10 says, and in that day, when he comes to be manifested, when he, when, when he becomes to be manifested in his glory within the saints, that's the day we are right now. This is an intervention of the Lord. And I want us to understand that that intervention is, is coming to you right now. And I want us to be prepared. I want us to be looking up to the Lord. I want us to be ready and to spend quality time in the presence of the Lord 
for, for God's intervention in your life. The intervention in your life that your family needs, your husband needs, your wife needs, your children needs, your finances needs, your health needs, your church needs, your city needs, your nation needs. We must look now for the intervening work of the Lord that's going to transcend the limitations that we have had in the church age. That's why he has to complete us. On the third day, he's going to finish his course. He's got to prepare people, interveners that he's preparing right now full-grown sons and daughters that he's going to trust with interventions, spontaneous interventions. Like yesterday, there was a spontaneous intervention. And I, I believe you'll be eating dinner and the Lord's presence is going to come on you. And in that presence, God is going to give you instructions and blueprints and strategies of, of, of instructions of what you need to do, where you need to go, how you need to do it for your life, but also for your, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your family, your schools, your cities. There's going to be an instruction from the Lord. There's going to be interventions of the Lord coming so that we, we are going to know what to do day by day, moment by moment. These suddenly moments, these spontaneous moments of the Lord, these spontaneous intimations of the Lord. The suddenly moments of the Lord are coming, beloved. So I want you to be prepared for them and start looking for them. See, this is a, it's a key because if you're looking for God's intervention, then you're placing yourself and your heart in a position for the Lord to intervene and to use you as an intervener. And when you're looking for the Lord interventions, he's going to come and he's going to refine you. He's going to deal with your heart. He's going to deal with your attitudes. He's going to deal with your mind. He's going to deal with the, the things that are in your heart that must be removed so that you can be the container of God's intervention power. God's intervention glory. That's why he's got to refine us like gold and like silver and finish us and plead us so that we can be formed into a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God so that we can be ready for the suddenlies of the Lord. And I know yesterday, I mean, I was not, you know, I was not looking for the Lord's presence that way. I mean, my heart is always looking for the Lord's presence, but I wasn't expecting him to come in a test, <laughs> you know, as we're testing that. And, and, and my son and my, my wife would say the same thing. We weren't expecting that. People weren't expecting to come and join me in worship, even though I said this was a test. They stayed on anyways. And I said, if you want to stay on, and I just started just to worship the Lord. And wow, there was an intervention moment of the Lord, a suddenly moment of the Lord when it was least expected. And that's what I'm trying to share with you, that as the emptier you become, the more you're looking towards the Lord, the more you get the gaze of your soul and your spirit towards the Lord, there's gonna be an intervening of God in your life, an intervening of God that's gonna prepare you with wisdom and understanding and, and, and guidance and instructions and blueprints and strategies that are gonna make what's happening on this earth clear to you, what you must do, how are you to lead your family? How do you lead your church? How do you lead your ministry? This is what's coming right now. In the midst of great darkness, God is coming as a great light with supernatural intervention. I'm not looking for political change. I'm looking for kingdom change. That's always what it's been. It's about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God changing everything and changing and transforming the nations. Amen. So we come under the complete headship of the Lord Jesus Christ until the nations of this world become the kingdoms of our God. Amen. We are living in that time of God's uh, uh, parousia, of his appearing within his saints. And in his appearing within us, his comings, like last night, what is he doing? He's manifestly, he's manifestly taking his place as head of the body. Henry, you're, you're, here, you're here to do a test, but I'm taking headship over you. This test is to be a place of worship. This test was to be an altar unto me. You can be driving in your car and the Lord is going to come with these sudden interventions so that an altar can be made, instructions where you're going to meet the Lord. So I want to encourage you. I want you to look for it because much guidance is coming. Much direction is coming. Guidance towards who you're going to marry if you're single, who you're going to, what God wants to do with your husband and wife and your family. Where, 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 where should you live right now? Which do you need to move? The understanding of how God is going to arrange you as his body parts are all coming together right now by the spirit of God. Direction is coming. Clarity is coming. Understanding is coming. Wisdom is coming from the Lord, from the kingdom of God age, from the kingdom glory realm for those that have been ready positioned to be an intervener. As you allow the Lord to allow and make a place for the Lord to come suddenly and intervene, you are preparing yourself to be used suddenly in God's intervening work that he wants to release on the nation. If you're not trained 
in the intervention of the Lord, trained by God to receive the interventions of the Lord, to respond correctly to his interventions, then you're not going to be ready to be used as one of God's interveners. That's going to bring forth tremendous transformational glory changes in cities and nations and on the earth. Amen. This is a good word. I hope it's encouraging you this morning. Anybody with me? Hello, Makiko. Susan, God bless you. Bonnie, Amanda, everyone, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Amen. We are living in that time of the parousia. That means the surrounding, the presencing of the Lord where he's appearing, manifesting to take his place as head over the body. We are entering, beloved, into the, entering into the glory realm. He's bringing us, he's, we're beginning to participate with the third heaven glory. We're going to begin to see things, understand things, know things by the seven spirits of God. We're coming into the realm with the seven spirits of God and, 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 and the spirit of prophecy, the voice of the Lord of his army is going to speak to us, direct us and guide us. But we got to begin to look for these suddenly moments right now, especially with what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months in our nation. We've got to be caught up in the Lord. Not caught up in the situations and the circumstances that we see around us. We need to be caught up in the Lord. We need to come up in the Lord. We need to be stationed and positioned in the Lord. Because God is going to deal with all of those things. Because man is not going to have the answer. Politicians are not going to have the answers. No matter Right now, you can see they're grasping for straws of how to, how to deal with COVID, how to deal with the economy. They don't have answers. They're going to try to come with an answer. They have a plan for their answer. But their answer is going to be foolishness. It's not going to work. Only God and God's answers are going to work. Hallelujah. Amen. We're about to participate with him in the third heaven as full grown sons. And we're going to live and move. And this is what I'm trying to share with you today. This is a word that God is having in the brain. We got to begin to anticipate we're going to be moving. And please, this is something you might want to write down. You know, you, we may be moving in a continuous state a continuous state of intervention. Amen. A continuous state of intervention. Maybe somebody might want to type that in as a note for me. I don't know if I have any moderators on right now, but I think I do. But if not, uh, just write it down. We're going to move in a continuous state of intervention. I want us to be looking for it. I want us to be looking for that continuous state of intervention. I'm going to show you scripturally. I'm not just saying this. This is not just me just randomly spewing out things of my opinion. This is revelation from the word of God, by the spirit of God. I know a lot of people are spewing out a lot of stuff. Okay, you're going to have to discern the true prophetic voice of the kingdom age from the, from the, from the, from the voices that are in the church age. You have to be able to tell and discern. The one way you're going to discern is that the word that's being brought is going to burn within you. It's going to burn. The witness of God is going to burn. The words from the kingdom, the, the prophetic from the spirit of prophecy, it will burn. It will transform your life. It will witness to you with such power and authority. Many times of what things God has already spoken to you, but it will take what he's spoken to you and take it to a deeper and a more, more intimate, personal, powerful level than, the, than, than you've known before. That's how you're going to know. Amen. Thank you for writing that. We're caught, we are called to moving in a continuous state of intervention. That's what's going to happen right now. So praise God. Okay. In which, and in this, and this is the key about it. You, in, as full grown sons and daughters of God, we're going to live and move in a continuous state of intervention in which we come under the Lord's divine control or his headship. This continuous intervention comes as he establishes his headship, his complete authority over the totality of your being, which where he can now direct. He can direct you to blow with the wind. He can direct you. He can instruct you. And this is where Psalm 32a is going to become so important. I just wrote about it. Psalm 32a is going to be one of the revelatory foundational scriptures for this intervening of the Lord. Because in Psalm 32a, he says, he says that, I, I will teach you and instruct you in the way that you should go, and I will guide you with my own eye. We're walking in a new realm of revelation of that scripture. We're walking in a new placement of that because of this intervening of the Lord, this continuous intervention in which the Lord is going to operate with divine control, totally controlling by revealing in us 
and to us and through us, his plans, his purposes, and strategies. Jeremiah 29, 11 is another scripture that's going to take on the, uh, a deeper, fuller meaning in your life in this interventions of the Lord. He said, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts and plans. What That word thoughts means I know the strategies. The word plans is blueprints. So I know I, I have the strategies and blueprints for your life. And we need to know them now. And he's intervening. And he's supernaturally going to come. He may not in those times where of that inter intervention speak a word to you. But just know that when he comes, just stay there. Listen to him. Worship there. And receive whatever it is that he's depositing within your spirit. Whatever it is. That, that he's depositing within your spirit it may not be for today. It might be for tomorrow. And it's supernaturally going to come out of you. Why? Because of this divine control of the Lord. And that's why I want you to understand that we're going to begin to move and live in a continuous state of intervention in which the Lord's divine control will be effective. It's going to be effective. It's going to change us, move us. And this is how we're going to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right work with the right people. We're going to be on time because this is the, because of this intervention, this continuous intervention of his glory realm. And that's what we got to look for. I pray today that we would have the gaze of our soul continuously looking for the Lord. Please, beloved, ask the Lord to train you, if you have not done this yet, to have the continuous training of your soul looking for the Lord so that while you're washing dishes or maybe you're vacuuming the floor or maybe at your work, the Lord can come at any time and intervene. See, we learned some of this in the church age, but we're about to come into a higher level of experience of these interventions, of these suddenlies, of this continuous intervention of the Lord. Why? Because things are happening rapidly on the, on the earth. And there's going to be great um, demonic work trying to shut up Christians, stop Christians, hate Christians, kill Christians, shut up our voice. It's going to come as it did in Jesus' day. But you know what? They tried to do that to the Lord and they couldn't touch him. They couldn't shut him up. And neither will they be able to shut up this remnant army of the Lord, nor will they stop them because the Lord Jesus is in that day. He's going to be manifest. He's going to manifest his glory within his people. He's going to be glorified in that day. He's going to be glorified in his saints. And we're in that day where he's being glorified. And that glory realm is going to bring a continuous intervention of divine control of the Lord so that we know what to do. So that when you look at your son and you look at your daughter and maybe they're not walking where they're supposed to, God is going to give you divine insight, divine instructions, divine blueprints, your husband, your wife, where you have not, where you have been frustrated, where you have not been able to see the change that God has promised you. You're going to see it now. God is going to instruct you and teach you what in the way that you need to go. And he's going to guide you with your own eyes. And so that when you speak from this place, when you speak from this intervention, it's not you speaking like we spoke for the church age, where, where, we, we, where we were limited, we're going to walk in the limitlessness of the Lord. He's not going to be limited by our inabilities. He's going to, be, he's going to completely fill us with his ability to bring transformational glory change to our lives, to our homes, to our families. And divine alignments are coming. And I know, and I don't know why I'm saying this today, but there are many of you that may still be single. You have children that are single. Those, the spouses and those things are coming together supernaturally by the Lord. But those that are to be married in the time that we have, understand the will of the Lord. As you wait upon the Lord, it can happen in a moment. Be open to the way the Lord wants to be able to bring you together, even your spouse. And even for our spouses that do know the Lord, that may not be walking with the Lord fully, be expecting the, that uh, this, this divine intervention of the Lord, these continuous interventions that are going to bring divine alignment, divine alignment, divine alignment into your homes, into your families. Because this is a covenant promise God made with you. And if he promised you that, he's going to complete it. How? By divine intervention. And remember what I said? The nations are coming to the place where they have no answers. The leaders of this world are going to become completely frustrated. Even those of the world, one world order are not going to be able to deal with the events that God is going to be releasing upon the earth, allowing to come. They're going to become totally frustrated. Their wisdom is going to become foolishness. And who's going to have the answers? God's people. 
who's going to have the authority, the power, and the dominion to be able to bring things into alignment that's going to bring glory and honor to the Lord, the Lord, only the Lord. Amen. And the God's people. So I'm going to say this again. So I'm going to say it again. As we enter into this glory realm, as we begin to participate in that third heaven as full grown sons, we are now going to live and move in a continuous state of intervention in which the Lord's divine control will be effective. I love that, don't you? Will be effective. It's about to take place. And that's why I said Psalm 32 8. It's going to be so important to that. At this present moment right now, the Lord is preparing overcomers. The message of the kingdom is a message of preparation. The message of the church age is salvation. The message of the kingdom age is preparation because he's forming something in the kingdom age. He's forming us into a kingdom of kings and priests unto God. So that's why there's going to be two conflicting messages that seem to be conflicting messages. You're going to hear the fivefold ministry from the church age, and it's going to be about salvation, heaven, the lost, you know, and all the things that we've always known in the church age. And contrastly to that, to the kingdom message, it's going to be a message of preparation, the preparation of a people, a preparation of a people to be able to walk in and live in throne room activity with the Lord. A message of preparation of what we're being formed into, a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God. They're going to be able to walk in what we just said, these divine interventions of the Lord. The church age ministries will not be able to walk in this intervention because they're not prepared for it. They'll be able to walk in, in what they've known in the way they've known it. But they're not going to be able to walk in this because this is not for the second day. It's for the third day. It's for the kingdom age and for the kingdom age people. Everyone, God wants every single believer to come into the revelation of his kingdom glory and his pure holy love and the kingdom age. And I pray and I hope you do that for our brothers and sisters who are not seeing this yet, that they will. That's what we pray. And the more that light shines within you, the more of this kingdom revelation is experiencing your life, the more you're changed by the glory from glory to glory. It's going to become beautiful and appealing to those that are hungering and thirsting for the Lord. So don't give up on anybody. Don't judge anybody. Just understand the difference between the two days. Understand the difference between the work. And that's what's causing some confusion because there are many that are still in the church age and still under a church structure that are hungering and thirsting for this more of God. But, you know, is it wrong to not to desire this? Should I be staying here? Should I be doing these things? And there's like a spiritual tug of war, which is the Lord showed me. There's a spiritual tug of war in the church because there's a spiritual tug of war over our nation in which direction we're going to go. But as we answer that tug of war in the spirit, and if we'll enter to the third day, then that side is going to win. And I know it's going to win. And what it's going to do is that's going to allow the glory of God to come and fill a people who are ready for it, a prepared people, a positioned people, with this intervening, continuous intervention of the Lord, these suddenlies of the Lord. We've known suddenlies in the church age. This is different. This is a continuous intervention while you're sleeping, whether you're aware of it or not, while you're washing dishes, whether you're aware or not. There's God is moving. He's doing he's going beyond our limits. Can you say amen to that? Because of the hour we're living in, he's not going to be limited by our weaknesses and the the places that still need to be changed. He's going to be able to operate above and beyond that and change us at the same time. Finish us at the same time. It's I, I, I can't even understand it. It's just what the word of God says he's going to do. He, because he says, in that day, he will, you know, he, in that day, he, he will be, he will, he, oh, I lost it. Sorry. In that day, he will be seen glorified within his saints. That's where we are. At the present time, the Lord is preparing overcomers, those who desire. Is that you? Those who desire to go beyond your past and present spiritual experience in the Lord. And that's, there are so many hungry ones still in the church structure. So many thirsty ones that want the more of God. They have been faithful paying their tithe. They've been faithful going to their churches. They've been faithful listening to their pastors. They've been faithful in the ministry, but yet inside of them is a burning longing for the, for the deeper of God, the more of God. They're saying within their spirit, I know, God, you have more than this, God. I yearn to be completed. I yearn to be completed completely yours. I yearn to be a vessel that's finished for your glory, Lord. They have a passion to just be the Lord, to just to do the desires of the Lord. They have no desire to live in the world, to to, to live the world's ways. And God is calling them forth, out from that system, out of that age, 
into the kingdom age. Amen. God has a people that he's preparing as overcomers that will go beyond their past and present spiritual experience and are responding to his war voice as a war trumpet. Why is he speaking as a war trumpet? Because it, the war trumpet is the Lord of hosts, the commander in chief who expects, listen, continuous obedience, continuous obedience. Continuous obedience positions us, a heart that will have continuous obedience positions you for continuous interventions. May I say that again? If your heart is ready and instantly to obey the Lord, continuously obedience, that's what God needs to have to bring forth his continuous intervention within your life. And that intervention is bringing what? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, what to do, where to go, how to say things, what to do, how to function, how to move, not only for your life, but for your family, for your loved ones, and for all those that God entrusts into your care. Amen? That's a good word. Because with that continuous state of intervention, God is bringing us under complete headship, under his complete control. And it's that heart that can hear that war trumpet's voice. And what this means, beloved, is that there are these ones, like yourselves, are where something different is taking place. How many of you know that? How many of you know we're not in the same place? Something different's happening. In spite of everything, in spite of everything that's going on in the world, we're being lifted up. Our head is being lifted up above our enemy, like it says in Psalm 27. David said, after one thing I desire of the Lord, and he says all those things, he said, then my head shall be what lifted up above my enemies. God is lifting up our head above our enemies. Why? Because he's going to fill it with instructions, with continuous intervention. Divine thoughts, plans, and blueprints are being downloaded when you least expect it. But you've got to be looking for it. Be looking for those suddenly moments. Be looking for that, inter that intervention of the Lord to manifest. Be looking for it. Set the gaze of your soul. I said this earlier. Upon the Lord. Say, soul, you will look for the Lord. You will wait on the Lord. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Praise God. There's something different taking place, especially as 2021 is coming into existence. And many, I believe you, are hearing a call to come into a higher level of relationship with the Lord. Why is that? Because God is bringing us into intervention, intervention, intervention. Are you ready for it? Are you looking for it? Do you want it? The interventions of the Lord? Because these interventions of the Lord are going to come with unprecedented glory, power, authority, and dominion to bring tra radical transformational glory change to your life, to your family, to your church, to your ministry, to this nation, and to the nations. It's come. The Lord has come. The Lord is here. And he's manifesting himself. Amen? In that day, where he will be seen, glorified in his saints. That's where we are. And so there are many of you that are hearing a call to come into a higher level of relationship with the Lord to receive these end time instructions and plans of the Lord. That's what these interventions are about. They're to receive the end time, end time instructions and plans of the Lord. The church age is not preparing you for that. It's preparing you to reach people, reach the lost. It's, prepare, it's, it's telling you to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. And those things we should always do. The kingdom age does not stop doing those things. They just stop doing those things without God. They stop doing those things without the mixture of God. And what they do is they come into the rest of God that now, whatever the Lord wants, it's not just a ministry. I have my ministry to the hospital. I have my ministry to this. Now we become a ministry. We don't do a ministry. We become a ministry like the Lord. And whatever the Father needed him to do, he did. He knew where to go. In some cities, he healed everybody. In some cities, he healed a few. In some cities, he taught. In some cities, instruction. He was totally under the obedience of the Father. He only did the will and the purposes of the Father. He didn't, he didn't focus on one ministry. He was the ministry. He was the ministry of the glory of the Father. He was the expression of the glory of the Father. And we are the glory of the Lord. And we are going to be the expression of God's glory on the earth. As he comes with these interventions, this continuous state of intervention, in which the Lord divinely controls us. 
He may send you today to Walmart, to, to that person in a wheelchair. You don't have to have a healing service. You become one. You don't have to have a deliverance ministry. You become one. You don't have to have a ministry that just feeds the poor. You become one because God will bring you to the poor here and there and there. And maybe he'll send you to a place to do it. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're going to be functioning under the intervention of the Lord. But if we can only see ministry from the second day church age and, and live in that church age mentality, we are not ready or prepared for this continuous intervening of the Lord. You know, people have often tried to label me, you know, I've been called it probably except an evangelist because I, I do the work of evangelists, but most people would recognize maybe four out of five of those Bible ministries. I certainly, especially in my early days of my walk with the Lord, did much evangelism and people thought I was an evangelist, you know, and, but right now when people want to say, you know, you're an apostle, you're a prophet, you notice I don't say that or a pastor, or teacher, or evangelist. People call me Pastor Henry because that's what I functioned in most of the time, and I'm not going to stop them from saying that, but I don't label myself that way. A lot of people call themselves apostle this, prophet. I won't do it, and the reason why I won't is this, is because if God needs me to function as an apostle, so be it. You'll know it. The people God sends me to will know it. If God needs me to function as a prophet, then so be it. He'll use me. If he needs to fun function, have me function as an evangelist, under this continuous intervention of the Lord, he's got me. If he needs me to be a teacher, then so be it. If he needs me to be a pastor, then so be it. That's why I don't like the labels. You know, yes, there's an apostolic prophetic calling on my life, but people have seen all of those things because that's Christ. He is all of those things. Does that make sense to you? Nothing against having that. And if the Lord tells you to do it, do it. That's, I'm just telling you me. I'm just telling you where I'm at. You know? There are, where I'm here, right? They are aware that something different is taking place. And many of you are hearing a call to this higher level of relationship with the Lord. And that higher level relationship with the Lord is going to release, beloved, that continuous state of interventions. Things are going to happen in this nation rapidly and in the world. And we need to walk in the, at rapidity of the Lord, the sensitivity of the Lord, the quickening of the Lord, the enabling of the Lord in ways we have never known in the church age. The Lord may say, listen, I need you to move from Montana or Iowa where Susan is. And I don't know where everybody else lives, but and, you know, and in the next month, I need you in Florida or I need you over here. But that's not going to make sense. It doesn't. But to those that are living in the continuous intervention, they will instantly obey the Lord. Why? Because it doesn't need to make sense. That witness of the spirit and God will confirm it through other signs that this is what they need to do. And he'll confirm it. But they'll be willing to go on a moment's notice as the Lord, do, as the Lord desires. Why? Because they're not stuck to the world. They're not stuck to, 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 to the world. They're able, as Abraham was, to be a sojourner. Praise the Lord. Revelation 4.1.2, one of my favorite scriptures that I share all the time, is after, after this, behold, a door was opened in heaven. Notice it was opened. The door was opened. And it's very important that we begin to see that door was opened. And the first voice, which I heard, was as it were a trumpet, a war trumpet, talking with me, which said, come up here. And I will show you the things which must come hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. This continuous intervention is a fulfillment of the scripture. Behold, come up here. I will show you things that are come hereafter. Yesterday, I'm playing, I'm, I'm trying out a new sound card, trying to get my get everything set for Sunday so that when I play on my keyboard, it's not going to sound garbled. I wasn't looking for, at that time with my natural eyes and my natural what I was doing, my natural work for an intervention of the Lord, but there he was. And he came and he met with me and he downloaded within my spirit, what? This word, this work that I'm sharing with you today, the understanding of why he came like that. I've had the Lord, I've had that happen to me in the church age, but this was so different. It was so different because it was not an activity that would have necessarily you would have looked for 
for this continuous intervention of the Lord. And there was a preparation in that time with the Lord. I did not get it then, but it was given to me then. I didn't have understanding of it then. I got understanding of it today. Are you ready for that? You might get it in the night hour. You might get it in a dream. You might get it in a vision. And I know there's a lot of talk right now, you know, that you got to stay in the word. Of course, you got to stay in the word, but you don't despise prophecy. You don't. We're to covet to prophesy. We're to covet to operate in those gifts of the spirit. Those revelatory gifts were critical for us. They don't supplant the word. They, they, they work in cooperation with the written word of the Lord. They work together, word and spirit. You need both. You need both. And we can't be afraid to operate in that realm. We can't be afraid to be operating that realm. Well, what if, it, what if you're not hearing right? Well, then the Lord will correct you and the Lord will instruct you and the Lord will teach you. That's why those gifts have to be discerned. That's why they have to be, you know, but I don't know, I don't understand why the same standard wouldn't be given to a pastor that preaches a message on Sunday. How do you know he heard right? I'm not saying this disrespectfully. But all of a sudden, because a pastor says so, and they bring a message, okay? Hey, where did they get it from? They could have got it from a book from somebody else. They could have got, and that's fine if that's what the Lord told them to preach. They could, they they could have got, they could have got it anywhere. But do, do we throw off our spiritual discernment just because they get up there in the pulpit and they preach it? Aren't we supposed to discern whether what they're speaking is right of the Lord? And I think pastors, especially true pastors, would want you to discern it. They would want you to do it. That's no different than understanding the prophetic realm. And if we're going to be moved in this continuous intervention of the Lord, it's going to require a new sensitivity, isn't it? A deeper sensitivity to the Lord, to knowing the Lord, hearing the Lord, seeing the Lord, and trusting him that Psalm 32, 8 is the word of God, that I will teach you and instruct you continuously in the way that you're going to go. Hallelujah. And I'm going to guide you with my own eye. The same God who gave us the rest of the Bible gave us those words too. He said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. And yet the Lord says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. That's what he wants us to operate. This continuous intervening of the Lord, this intervention that's coming, this intervention, intervention is God is going to reveal to you from his kingdom realm beyond the limitations that we've known in the church age, the instructions you need. How many want that? How many of you need that right now? The blueprints. How many of you can say, I need the blueprints and the strategies that God has for my life. I need to know what the Lord is desiring from me. I need to know what the Lord wants me to do, where he wants me to walk. I need the instructions of how to lead my family, how to guide them, right? Don't you need that? That's a personal hearing of the Lord, as well as reading the scriptures and, and, and the combination of the spirit taking the scriptures and making them real within your life. But it's also a direction of the Lord because the Bible doesn't tell me how to go to Walmart today. Sorry, it doesn't. It doesn't tell me what to do in a pandemic. No, it doesn't. Should I wear a mask or shouldn't I wear a mask? Is it spiritual to wear a mask or not? I've heard Christians, and boy, is there a, ugh. Sometimes I just turn Facebook off. I don't want to even watch it because there are people in the church that are saying, you are not living in faith if you wear a mask. And then there are others that are saying, if you don't wear a mask, you're infecting everybody. What, what, what is it? It's neither. It's listening. If the Lord says, wear a mask, bring hand sanitizer, wear gloves. What is that to anyone else? That's what God told you to do. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Whatever he guides you, that continuous intervention of the Lord. Maybe in some place, he'll tell you not to wear a mask. In another place, he did. He knows us. He's guiding us. He's leading us, directed us as those that are led by what? The Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Are you ready for this continuous interventions on a new level? Are you ready, beloved? Are you ready? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I just got a little bit more to share with you. I actually have a lot more to share with you, but I won't. I got a lot of things God had me write out today, but that's all right. We'll get as far as we can go. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just a little bit more. After this, Revelation 4, 1 and 2, as our nation 
and the world conditions exceed increasingly deteriorate. It's becoming evident that there is no lasting solution to the world's problems except through divine intervention. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to share with you today. That is the word that God gave me for this nation. Any possible method of dealing with all this stuff in our nation, in the present world, dilemmas that we're seeing, like COVID-19, the economy, our political system, the courts, is gonna require leaders to come to, the recon recon to recognize that they are incapable of any resolution of these problems apart from God. And that's what we first have to come to understand, that what we are about to face, we are incapable of facing apart from God. So what is the Lord doing? I'm gonna move beyond the limitations. I'm gonna accelerate you. I'm gonna complete you. I'm gonna finish you. And as I'm finishing you, I'm gonna empower, empower you to learn how to walk in the continuous intervention of my spirit, the continuous hearing, the continuous direction, the continuous GPS system that you have not known in the church age, that I need to teach you, that I need to impart to you, that I need to train you with now while there's still time so that you are ready and prepared to be guided by his own eye, to be instructed and taught in the way I will teach you and instruct you in the way, see that's direction, in the way that you should go. If, our if, if all we're hearing is about what we should do to reach people, to minister to people, and that's the entirety of the message that we receive, we will not be ready to move with the Lord because all we're gonna need to, all we'll know is how to go and reach people. We will not know, we will not know how to move in divine intervention when the whole world collapses, when the whole world system comes, when God releases his judgments. And I know you say, many think we might, well, we're not gonna be here. Well, we're here for COVID, aren't we? We've been here for this election, haven't we? We've been here to see what's happened in our cities. We've been here. When the economy's been shut down, we've been here when governors lock down their whole state, people can't open their businesses. We've been here for these things. How are we going to cope with that? How do you deal with it? They tell you you can't open your business or you they can't go to your church. That's been happening. California, they shut the churches down and the churches had to resist the governor's orders and go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court sided with them. But if they didn't go all the way to the Supreme Court, the, the churches would be on lockdown. And what do you think the enemy wants? He wants us not to meet. He wants us not to speak. He wants the church to be silenced, stopped, removed. You think that's going to decrease this year? No way. It's going to increase. Even as end time, end time things happening. That's why God is preparing us. That's why the kingdom message is a message of preparation, of training, of equipping, so that as overcomers, as a man-child company, as prepared ones, we will be able to walk in the continuous intervention of God's glory realm, of that third heaven activity, that we can function with those living creatures as wheels within a wheel, which I've been sharing during the daytime about. But I'm saying and speaking to you today, and you can judge this for yourselves, to be expecting intervention moments, to be looking for the interventions of the Lord. And I pray that from this moment, as I'm releasing this word from the Lord, that's exactly what's gonna happen in your life. As I was playing my keyboard, trying to do the sound system, I didn't know that that's, as I got on there, it would become a time of worship with the Lord, where the Lord would come and overwhelm me and overwhelm my house and overwhelm those that were watching with me. It was so overwhelming. It was not planned. Do you see? It wasn't planned. It was unscripted. And that's how we're going to be led in these unscripted moments. This is what you got to look for. We understand the script. We know when maybe we'll gather next uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock. Okay, that's fine. We may not know what the Lord wants to do, but there's a time. But now God's saying, I have other times. Because why? Because this intervention is bringing, and this is the other key operative word I want you to hear today. There's two things I want you to gather from, from this today that, that are really, really critical uh, for the Lord, uh, from the Lord. And that is the continuous state of intervention in which the Lord's divine control is established. His headship, his divine control. 
And so while you're washing dishes, while you're maybe you may even be watching a movie and whoosh. We got to look for it and be expecting him. What is that? They that wait upon the Lord, right? Isaiah 40, they that wait expectantly for the Lord. Will you allow the Lord to increase your expect your expectation level today? Will you allow the Lord to lift you up into a new realm of divine and continuous interventions? Not just scripted interventions, but the unscripted ones, the hidden ones, the secret ones, the ones that you need to go to Walmart tomorrow, the ones that you need to speak to your son that may be in rebellion or your daughter or to strengthen them, you know, and encourage them. Or maybe you're going to release a word, a, a prophetic, a apostolic release into their lives so that they can function in their destiny. Are you ready? That's not looking to be a minister. That is ministry that comes from the spirit of God, of our obedience and our surrender. It requires a heart that is ready to instantly obey and continuously listening. It's interesting, and I've said this in, in some of the past teaching, but in the Mount of Transfiguration, after Jesus was done talking to Moses and Elijah, a cloud comes down and the father speaks to, to the Peter, James, and John. He said, this is my beloved son. And I didn't understand the power of these words. But be continuously listening. That's intervention. Be continuously listening and obeying him. That is what we need to bring before the Lord to receive the interventions. God is intervening in our nation right now. It may not be the way people thought. Maybe people thought it would be done through political means. It's not going to be. It never was going to be done through political means. It's going to be done through God's means. And yes, that will affect the political realm, just like it'll affect every other realm of society. But it will be by God's intervening, God's glory, God's enabling, God's grace, God's power, God's authority, God's dominion, filling a people who are living in the continuous state of his looking and ready for his interventions. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is important. We as intercessors must pray that the heads of the nations, whoever they may be right now, will acknowledge their need for our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever the president is, and it seems it's going in this direction uh, of, 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 of Vice President Biden, Who knows who's going to be the prime minister of Israel? Will it be Benny Netanyahu? We don't know. But we've got to pray right now that the heads of the nations will begin to acknowledge their need for the Lord Jesus to intervene. Whether they would be, whether it would be President Trump for the next two weeks or if it's President Biden after that, whether it be congressmen, state legislators, government, whether it be corporate leaders. As intercessors, we got to pray that, that, that there's a recognition that they come to the end of themselves. Now, we know there's going to be some that are not with the one world order. But there are those that will. There are those that will hear. There, there are those that will see. And even though they may be seduced for the moment to be under that, world, that one world government system, the Lord, will begin, the Lord will begin to intervene in it and shine its light on it to see the evil that it is and the wickedness of what it is. And maybe even some of those that may be caught up in it today will come out and see. That's why we got to pray. So therefore, as I, I close today, why did the Lord give me that word intervention, intervention, intervention? Because there is a, right now, a present and urgent need in the United States of America for the continuous state of divine intervention from the Lord. And that time is here. That end time intervention is a work of the Lord that's going to bring into your life the experience, the power, the authority, the instructions of the blueprints from God to be used as an intervener for his end time plans. A people prepared for his glory. 
are people who are going to live in that continuous state of the intervention of the Lord. Amen. Come up here so I can show you what the things that will hear, hear that will come hereafter. That is so critical. Why? Because this day is not going to come upon those that are prepared, unaware. So they're going to know what to do. They're going to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right work with the right people, with the right word, with the right tools, with the right authority from God. Flowing in this continuous intervention of God's glory that will bring change and transformation and the answers to manifest upon this earth that will change it and eventually change every single kingdom of this world into the kingdoms of our God and Christ. Thank you, Lord. In this intervention season, the Lord is going to lift you up. All those that are ready for his end time purposes to receive and bring forth the divine intervention of God. Let me just, I'm going to close with this. I could go on for another hour, but I'm not. I'm just, this is enough for today. For today. I, I feel like a release from the Lord. In this time of divine intervention, let me close with this again. The Lord is going to lift all those who have been made ready into his end time purposes to receive the divine interventions of God's needs. And as full grown sons and daughters of God, they will manifest those interventions in obedience to God as God directs them because they've been prepared, positioned, and trained by the intervention, the continuous intervening of the Lord. I'm saying this, that in these next few weeks, there is going to be a training by the Holy Spirit of this very word of intervention. Be expecting it. Be expecting new encounters and intervention with the Lord, instruction from the Lord in ways that you have never seen and you never heard before. The Bible scriptures are going to burn off the pages to you with revelation light as you walk in spirit and truth. You're going to get understanding that you didn't have before, wisdom that you didn't have before from the word of God and from the spirit of God together so that you can go up higher into that realm of God's continuous intervention. And that way God can form you into his interveners, the releases of that glory upon the earth. As he trains you personally, as you operate it personally, as he works within you personally, then he can work it outwardly through you. And that's the stage many in the church age want to miss. They don't want it worked within them first. They just want to go do it. They want the anointing to go do it, but they never get that word worked within them as their life's experience. This intervention is the word, the Lord Jesus Christ as a king of glory coming to be seen within you, the saints. In that day, he shall be glorified in his saints. Amen. Well, that's where I'm going to end for today. Like I said, I could have more notes, but that's, I think that's enough. <laughs> Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Remember, we're coming this starting now into that place of continuous intervention of the Lord. That continuous intervention is going to bring forth divine order from the Lord. Amen. Divine control. And I'll say it one more time. We're going to move in a continuous state of intervention in which the Lord's divine control is going to be effective in our life and is going to use us as his end time interveners. Father, I thank you that today, January 8th, 2020, you are intervening in the hearts of your sons and your daughters in this nation. Lord, I thank you that you are lifting us up beyond politics, beyond worldly concerns and cares. And like David said in Psalm 24, Lord, today you're lifting up our heads above our enemies. And we're lifting up our heads as gates and as everlasting doorways. And we say again to you today, Lord, come in, King of glory. 
Lord, as you come in as a king of glory, you are the Lord strong and mighty, and you're bringing us up into a place of continuous intervention, that you're continuously intervening in our lives in ways we have not seen, where we were limited in the church age. You're now working beyond those things so that we can gain the wisdom, the understanding, the instruction, the blueprints, and to be taught and instructed in the way that we could go. And you are guiding us by your own eye. Father, I pray such a release, such a strengthening, such an impartation, Lord, to all those that are watching this broadcast, that Lord, that today, Lord, each one would begin to experience that continuous intervention. And I release the word that you've given me, intervention, intervention, intervention. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that as you intervened, intervened in John, the beloved's life on the Isle of Patmos, and you prepared him to see, Lord, and you brought him up, Lord, through that door open in heaven, and behold, he saw a throne. So it will be with us, Lord, that I thank you that you're bringing us into that throne room activity, Lord, to understand that throne room activity, that third heaven activity, that continuous, Lord, intervening that must come so that you can form us into a wheel within a wheel, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, trained, equipped, prepared, battle ready as overcomers, Lord, as interveners, Lord, that you want to use for your end time purposes on planet Earth, Lord. And through this continuous intervention, Lord, in these intervening people that you're raising up as sons and daughters, as a man child, Lord, the kingdoms of this earth are going to become the kingdoms of our God in Christ. Lord, this wheel within a wheel is coming into existence, Lord, as we learn the spontaneity of your spirit, as we're able to move blow with the wind, Lord, as we're able to move by your directions instantaneously. And Lord, like you did on the Mount of Transfiguration, Father, you said these words to Peter, James, and John, this is my beloved. Let us hear that today, my beloved son, be constantly, and we say yes, listening to and obeying him. And we say yes, Lord so that your continuous intervention will now manifest. Lord, it will manifest. Your continuous intervention will become a reality in our life so that we can see where we've not seen, we can hear where we've not heard, we can understand where we have not understood, Lord, so that we are prepared, equipped, and battle ready for this moment in history. And Father, you said in your word that, Lord, you said, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man, the things that you have in store for those that love you. So I thank you, Lord, that today is that day where we haven't seen, we're going to see. Where we haven't heard before, we're going to hear. What has never entered into our heart is going to enter into our hearts because you love us, Lord. And now you, Lord, who can do exceedingly above all that we think or ask, to you, Lord, be the glory. I thank you for this moment of intervention in our nation, your intervention in your remnant people, your intervention in your church, your continuous intervention and the reality of all that means to be released within us, Lord, beyond anything we've seen and known. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, I hope that was worth coming and changing your day to come and listen to. Amen. I hope so. I just felt that this was a word that the Lord wanted for me to release today on this Friday, you know, and so that's what I, I did by obeying the Lord. And we thank you and we give thanks to the Lord and thank you for watching this broadcast. Um, we'll be back Sunday. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, these, these uh, blowing the shofar there as God leads me. He could tell me to do another one tonight and I'd do it. These are special times of, I think, preparation and maybe explanation of how we are to be prepared to be able to move with the Lord. So as he leads me to do them, I do them. Well, thank you for watching. We love you. God bless each and every one of you. If we can serve you in any way, please send me an email, you know, or you can message me on Facebook. My email is at go at flameoffire2007.org if you would like to reach out to us in any way. We love you. Have a blessed afternoon, evening, no matter where you are. And we'll see you, those of you, you who want to gather with us for worship on Sunday and intimate time with the Lord. See you Sunday at 10 a.m. Love you all. God bless. Bye-bye.